much, everybody. Hello. Wow. That feels great. Welcome, welcome, welcome to The Tonight Show. I'd like to start by wishing everyone a very happy new year. Yep, thankfully it is a new year, and boy, aren't things better now? <laughs> well, guys, everybody is talking about this over the weekend. President Trump called Georgia's Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger about the election and might have gotten himself into some major legal trouble. Let's hear what crap it was this time! All I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes. Yeah. That's right. Trump asked him to somehow find enough votes to flip Georgia so that he would win the state by one vote. <laughs> one vote. Trump was like, because if we're going to do this, we can't make it obvious. Apparently, every January, Trump's New Year's resolution is to find a new way to get impeached. <laughs> Trump's call lasted for an hour, by the way. An hour. It was like one of his calls to Fox and Friends, except he actually cared what the other person had to say. And this... <laughs> what a waste. Trump could have spent that hour not helping roll out the vaccine. <laughs> As if the story isn't crazy enough, Trump had tried calling him 18 times since the election. Yeah. I think we're one call away from Trump saying, I'm on your front porch. I can see your home. Pick up. I can see your screen in the call. You're making eggs. Hello. I'm right here. <laughs> 18 times. Apparently, Raffensperger was thinking about putting the phone on vibrate and turning it into a massager. <laughs> <laughs> it costs us uh, $100,000 for that yeah, sound. <laughs> <laughs> you know you've lo No, thank you. For 150. Uh, you know you've lost power when someone gets a call from the president and the press is ignore 18 times. <laughs> when Trump calls, people actually move to the room in the house where the connection is spotty. It's like, honey, I'll be in the crawl space. Trump's trying to call me. <laughs> hey, are you that talk show, that game show host? That's right, honey. Carl Bernstein said Trump's call was far worse than Watergate. It doesn't mean much to Trump. He thinks Watergate is about toilets not flushing hard enough. <laughs> Sometimes you have to flush it two, three times. <laughs> Trump tried everything to persuade the Secretary of State, but he wouldn't budge. Later, Trump told Raffensperger, Come on, you were such a nice guy on Cheers. What happened to you? Yeah, that's what you call a voter fraud there, Sammy. <laughs> yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you very much. Thank you very much. Nice, nice. I break it out every now and then. Thank you, just like another combination. Pull it out. There you go. Put it back in. Yeah, so you call it a voter fraud there, Sammy. <laughs> yep, Trump's call just kept going. Uh, listen to what else he had to say. Can you find some extra votes in a filing cabinet? No. A basement? No. That weird gap between your driver's seat and your armrest? <sighs> I'm sure you saw some ballots in the trash, you know? The trash. You can't see me over the phone, but I'm winking, okay? Trash. They destroyed all the voting machines. I have no idea what you're talking about. They removed the machines, and then the machines turned into robots, and they voted for Biden. And you can't let the Decepticons steal the election. They're shredding all kinds of things. Everything is shredded. Our ballots, our cheese, Kumail Nanjani's abs. The list goes on, Brad. I'll make you a statue. I don't want a statue. We got a bunch of these Confederate statues just lying around. Come on. We redo the face, give you a cool beard, mutton chops. Would you like that? Like a Bridgerton type of vibe, Brad? Come on. Just say you found a box full of ballots in the trunk of your car. I can't do that, Mr. President. Please. No. Please. <laughs> Wait. No one's recorded this, right? Interesting, right? We... <laughs> Please. And a lot of people are talking about this. On Wednesday, Congress is set to certify Joe Biden's victory, but 12 Republican senators have pledged to challenge the results. Can we see the 12 Republican senators? It looks like the chart of different haircuts you get out of Supercuts in Idaho. <laughs> uh, they are the headshots if you're casting a movie about an evil lawyer who swindles an orphanage. <laughs> That's the cast of Ocean's 12 if they were robbing an L.L. Bean. 
Meanwhile, all eyes will be on Georgia tomorrow for the state's two runoff races, which will determine the Senate majority. Another election night? All right! <laughs> yep, the election is tomorrow, which means we should have the results by approximately Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> That's right, it's a big night. In fact, Brian Williams is already doing his voice exercises. It's too close to call. It is too close to call. <laughs> it is too close to call. Are you the game show host? You betcha! Yeah! Yep, everyone's focused on Georgia's Senate election, and now several members of Congress are speaking out about the runoffs. For example, Republican Congressman Bob Good said, if the Republicans win both races, then I'll feel very, well, my last name. <laughs> then Democratic Congresswoman Susan Wild said, if the Republicans win both races, that'd be absolutely, well, my last name. <laughs> then Republican Andy Barr said, if the Democrats pull this off, I'm gonna spend every night at the, well, my last name. <laughs> Then Congresswoman Virginia Fox said, I might be a Republican, but I can't deny that John Ossoff is a total, well, my last name. <laughs> then Republican Congressman French Hill said, if the Democrats beat us, I'm gonna pack my bags and move to a, well, my full name. <laughs> and finally, Missouri Senator Roy Blunt said, whoever wins, I'm gonna order some Papa John's and roll a big giant spliff. <laughs> Some sports news. Uh, guys, the NFL regular season is over, and for the first time since 2002, the Cleveland Browns are going to the playoffs. <laughs> Even Georgia's Secretary of State was like, that can't be right. Count the wins again. <laughs> when they heard that they made the playoffs, the Browns were like, there's more games after the season? <laughs> do they do that every year? Yeah, the Browns are going to the playoffs. Fans are like, thanks. The one year we can't be there in person. You gotta be kidding me. Right now, the people of Cleveland are thinking, even when we win, we lose. Some business news. I saw that Pizza Hut is celebrating 25 years of its famous stuffed crust by giving away a stuffed crust pizza without the actual pizza. Take a look at this. <laughs> it's great if you want a pizza that more closely resembles an unrolled condom. Seriously, what could be more exciting than sinking your teeth into a soggy cheese tire? Here's how they do it. First, they make the pizza, then the delivery guy eats it from the inside out before handing it to you. <laughs> Takes practice, but you can do it. Some entertainment news. I saw that a Rubik's Cube movie is now in the works. I don't know about you. I'm, I'm not streaming that movie. A Rubik's Cube is meant to be enjoyed on the big screen. I'm sure it'll be great, though. It's basically Spider-Man if Peter Parker never got bit by a spider. <laughs> and finally, this is strange. I saw that a seemingly normal house for sale in Vermont has an entire jail inside. Man, as a parent, you could really put a kid in a timeout. I mean, wow. <laughs> the listing agent was like, it comes with uh, hardwood floors, a large backyard, and uh, Carl, who's serving 10 to 15 for armed robber. <laughs> I'm hungry. The previous owner decided to sell because the overhead was a little high and he was tired of getting shivved every morning.